Hi, how are you? So excited, are you kidding? I'm producing a movie that's here at, uh, at Comic-Con. I've got a panel. Uh, super excited, ridiculously excited. Good to hear. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I've got to be honest, I'm kind of excited about this too. Like, I got, I got the game to say, hey, talk about a movie called Zombie. Tidal Wave, yeah. It's comfort food. You know what? Worked on Sharknado. We did six movies. After the second movie, it didn't really take too much to figure out the formula. And I figured I need to be producing movies, okay? I hope to work in front of the camera as long as I can. But my father always taught me to turn one job into two, I and find a way. And I always wanted to produce. I've had a production company since 1992. I haven't really done much with it. It's been more of like a tax thing. But this afforded me the opportunity to create a situation where I can now staff up, that I can produce movies. I just had to prove to someone that I could do it. So I went into sci-fi. They knew I was coming in to pitch. And I, I'm sitting at a table with suits. This is a big table just like you guys. And I said, I got three words that are going to change everything. And, the, and I didn't talk. So it was awkward. They're like, because I wanted them to ask me for it. I wanted them to pull it out of me. And I said, before I tell you the title, from the writer of Sharknado, because I worked with Thunder Levin on the story. Directed by Anthony C. Ferrante. Anthony who directed all the Sharknados, starring Ian Ziering from Sharknado. <laughs> Theatrics, it's a big part of me, but I wanted to like, get the room, like you guys are giggling, they were doing the same thing. I said, zombie tidal wave, and then I did this. I got all cocky, and they're laughing. You know, there's, NBC Universal, such a great company, they're so, you know what? Working with Sci Fi and NBC Universal with these Sharknado movies is like working with a bunch of friends because they all get it. You know, we're all, war we're all, we all have an oar in the water. We're all rowing towards the same goal. And I really feel like I've had a partnership with them in these movies. I mean, we do a weekend, but it's up to them to like get it out there and do all the press and promotion. And they, they do a beautiful job at it. So, I went to them first. I said, look, guys, I'm bringing this package to you first because I feel like I have a home here. But just know, you know, i got a wife and kids at home. If you guys don't want this, I'm going to your competition with the same package. Kind of like... <laughs> and they said, okay, tell us a story. So I proceed to tell them the story of Zombie Tidal Wave. I'm not going to tell you now because I don't want to spoil it. But they, after I told them the story, they were like... Yeah, I like it. And they said, well, what's your signature weapon? Because Finn Shepard had the chainsaw. They wanted to know what Hunter Shaw's signature weapon was. I said, that's an excellent question. Really hadn't sussed it out yet 100% of my mind. All we had was a, uh, a double-bladed samurai sword that Hunter takes from some kid who bought it on the Home Shopping Channel that the police had taken from him because he cut his brother's pinky toe off with. But anyway, Hunter takes it and turns it into something even more grand uh, after he figures out how he can kill these zombies that can't be killed. The zombies in Zombie Tidal Wave have nine lives. You chop the head off, it'll still bite you. You cut the arm off, and the arm could still grab you and, and kill you. There's no way to kill, it's a systemic problem with these zombies. So we had to come up with a way to kill them on a systemic level. It's not just scrambling the brains with a, a stick in the eye. You need to take the entire system down. And we came up with a way to do that. And then I figured out a way to incorporate it into my double-bladed samurai sword. And it works beautifully. If you stick around to see the promo, at the very end of the teaser, you're gonna see the sword and you'll see what it's all about and it's it's awesome you know zombies are very popular but nobody wants to hear the same zombie story 
So we found a way to dish up this comfort food with new spice. And that's what it takes. Original ideas are hard to come by. So if you can take something that people love already and create an iteration, a derivative of, and serve it in a way that looks like it's a completely new dish, then it's exciting again. And I knew that going into this whole process. We had to find a way to do it differently. Zombies exist in our theoretical world. Sharknadoes exist in our theoretical world. But I needed to find a way to do it differently. Uh, we, were, we were wrestling with a few things. The story came first. Um, was thinking maybe the uh, the Walking Dead Sea. <laughs> kind of like that. We thought maybe Zombie Tsunami. But uh, apparently there's a video game out there, Zombie Tsunami. And I tried to get in touch with them repeatedly, but they never uh, wrote back to me, so I couldn't I couldn't do that. I couldn't use their intellectual property. But Zombie Tidal Wave was fine. And that's what I pitched initially. So we went with it. It's fun. Thanks. Oh yeah. So now you don't have the digital where they splatter you into real stuff over and over. What kind of adjustment is that? Well, um, it raises the stakes quite a bit because when you have a zombie head that you're going to lay waste to with a boat propeller, um, you only get so many cracks at that, and it has to look good, has to react as you expect it. Camera has to be in the right angles to capture everything. Um, so it, it kind of raised the stakes a little bit. We couldn't fail at our practical effects. We've got several of them in there, and it, it's, um, I like practical effects more. You can always tell a little bit like, oh my God, that looks kind of cheesy. Especially when you're working on a smaller budgeted film. I mean, if I had James Cameron movie money, it would be flawless. But I think part of the fun in these movies is they are a tad flawed. That there is, like, oh my god, that person just had his head chopped off and wasn't he running through the background in the next scene? You know, you only have so much to work with. But there were a lot of practical effects, uh, but we teamed them up nicely with a visual effects company out of Canada that over delivered. I am so in awe of what my idea has become, uh, how it's just grown into something bigger than I imagined. You know, when you work with talented people, you accomplish more. And this movie uh, really has far surpassed what I had envisioned when I first came up with the story. It's really really kind of special. We've got some amazing underwater shots where there's zombies swimming up to the surface that I kind of thought that we would just talk about that. But all of a sudden, the visual effects goes, oh no, we can, we can create that. I'm like, you can? Really? Yeah, so we like that. Come see the teaser. You'll see, you'll see a lot of what's going on. And of course, you're going to see a tidal wave with thousands of zombies in it. Like, what the hell? Who told you it was set in the 80s? I think it's like Yeah, it's that kind of. Yeah, it's inspired by like the move, the horror movies that you saw, but it takes its current. It's very today. Yeah, kids have their cell phones. Wow. It is a tough call. You know, George Romero continues to be, uh, you know, especially with like all the synth music. Oh my God, it's like so creepy and gory. Um, you know, Anthony is a big George Romero fan. So there's a bit of that gore in it. Um, we hired this guy, um, 
Craig Perkins out of Canada. Oh, actually, he's in the United States who does a lot of synth music. So we brought him in as one of the composers to add that kind of that creepy synth sound to some of the more um, well-known sounds to add stingers and fright moments and create tension. Um, it's really, a, like I said, it just has far surpassed anything that I ever uh, imagined when I first conceived Zombie Tidal Wave. So I, I've kind of a, a policy to have. Yeah. So uh, I, I know you guys were, were working on or are still working on the, uh, the Beverly Hills 90210 reboot type yeah. of Working uh, on it right now. And uh, was there ever a thought in your mind of trying to combine these two types of things? I, I know that the, the reboot is more of a meta type thing where you have yes. to try to put the reboot together. So did you ever think about maybe instead of a reboot, bringing them into a zombie apocalypse or doing something where it's just like super like, okay, this is what am I looking at? Yeah. Um, don't really want to confuse the audience too much. You know what? Everyone has a pretty huge... Um, ability to suspend disbelief but all of a sudden when you start crossing genres it becomes convoluted and you get a sense that you're being played and I never want to take the audience for granted in that way I respect them too much and I appreciate them too much to just do something that is like a blatant ploy to create a giggle um, so I, I don't think that, that really never, never came to mind you got to keep the genres separated I mean if ever uh, Tori was in Sharknado but it wasn't like it was Donna Martin in Sharknado you gotta keep you know different it's just different genres 